But just talk to us about why the market is looking at this and giving this more weight than the good GDP number and the great jobs number. Well, it's interesting. I mean, the good GDP number and the good jobs number could be very well why the president is doing this now, because uh, the trade hawks around him mm -hmm. have all always said the economy is strong. If we're really going to mm -hmm. fix this uh, imbalance with China, we've got to do it now when yeah. the U.S. economy can weather it. And the president ha has said, you know, you don't see consumer inflation rising rapidly here, that we're absorbing, uh, absorbing these tariffs. But look, if, you, uh, if you're importing furniture or smart watches or uh, baby, you know, uh, baby car seats or bicycle helmets or all kinds of diff 5,000 different categories of items, prices would go up as soon as Friday. Now, doesn't it sound, though, like the president it sounds a bit impatient? He had a deadline of, of March 1st, and he waived that deadline because such good uh, progress was being made in 10 rounds now of talks with the Chinese. It sounds to me like he is frustrated that there are core structural issues that the Chinese haven't moved far enough on, and he doesn't yeah. want to be blamed for taking a headline win for a weak deal, right? Just a weak yeah. deal for right. headline win. I think he's sensitive to that. So, Christine, the, 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 there had been two camps, my understanding, in the administration's hardliners, Lighthizer, Peter Navarro, yep. pushing for, yep. for, for a harder deal, and then others who they describe as accommodationalists, right, uh, perhaps Steve Mnuchin and others, pushing for something a little bit softer. Um, do we have a sense of who has the upper hand now in those Well, it sounds like, and, and I have been told several times when I've asked this question to folks around the president, he is the one driving China policy. It is him and him alone, and that he has been very strong on China for, for very many years, and he thinks this is a core campaign promise um, that he has got to level the trading, uh, the, the level the playing field with with China. Um, you know, and what what he what he doesn't want people around him don't want is just a big soybean order or undoing the damage that's been done by the past year. They really do want structural changes, promises mm -hmm, yeah. about not stealing American intellectual property. Uh, you know, uh, the U.S. economy is in a better position than China's, though. So maybe yeah. President Trump thinks that he can put keep tariffs on for the rest of the year if, and raise tariffs, mm -hmm. and that um, he has the upper hand here. Right. By the way, guys, it also stands in stark contrast to you know his vice presidential uh, former vice president and presidential candidate Joe Biden saying last week China's not yes such a big worry right, right. and here right. he is saying no we got to go hard 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 and right. also well, yeah. by the way we talk about this a lot you and I pay the tariffs China doesn't yeah, pay right, it. right ends up in the prices of the goods we buy yeah. end, of, end of story yeah. And right now, that 200 billion is 10 percent tariffs. When you go up to 25 percent, that starts yeah. to bite. And remember, the president's threatening to do everything. Shortly, he said, another 325 mm. uh, billion dollars. I would say one and a half percent. I know that looks really scary, guys. Put it in context. The S&P is up 17 percent this year. This mm. is not a big hit here yet. We no. want to see uh, what the president says, what the Chinese negotiators say this week, and right. uh, and see where this goes from here.